Alright guys, got another deck for you here. Uh, Mischievous Debora today. This is a deck that I really, really, really was excited for back at the drop of set 10 when I saw Debora. I'm, I've always liked sword cards. I think they're pretty cool. And we got, we really got something really, really cool with Debora. He plays much differently than I feel Trunks does. Trunks is a much slower sword personality. He does have better board clear than Debora. Um, but he's a lot slower. Whereas Debora here is just straight on full on aggro. He's a very early game MP. Um, not saying that you cannot win a game later on with him, but the longer the game goes on, the generally the more your opponent stabilizes. And he's he's an MP that very early builds up advantage uh, with his level one and two powers, being able to search you sword cards out of your life deck and discard power respectfully. So to start off, uh, I guess might as well go through my list here. It's very, very attack heavy. We start off with the freestyles here. Uh, Cost of Strike, which is technically style card if you're Majin. It's pretty much like a weaker dev blow in terms of the discard pile banishment, but it does more damage. I love this card. It's a really great card. I love dev blow, and this is like weaker dev blow to me. I say weaker because I like to be able to choose what I'm banishing, but. Being able to rejuvenate too is really nice. Helps you stay in the game a little bit longer. And just the anger hate is awesome. This card is so good. And it was a great, great addition when it came out. Next, we have Stomach Crusher. Now this is a card that I honestly flip-flop on with this this card. And I will say Sagacious Striker. Two cards that I can see floating into a Debord list. Depending on what you feel like you're going to play against. Right now, I've slotted in Stomach Crusher mainly because I'm worried about Black Anger. Or, sorry, not Black Anger, sorry, Black Control. Uh, I think that it's it's kind of... It's a card that I honestly don't really like to draw into a lot of time. But it's definitely necessary against the certain decks that are going to be ending combat. And, again, you need to be able to lock people down. So, I think it's a worth, worthy slot. You know, I, I'll probably end up cutting it down or cutting out completely. But for right now, I think it's... It's warranted, depending on again, depending on the meta. But I think right now, it's it's the card that needs to be in most of board decks. Dose Glow, amazing. One of my favorite cards in the game. I collect Devlos. This card is so good. It just any physical beak deck should be running this card. Pile Hate is awesome. I'll dig a grave. Now this card, of course, this should pretty much be in almost every physical beats, if not energy beats, aggro deck. Amazing card. Rarely ever do I try to advance an MP with this card, but it is there if you ever do need it in a certain control matchup where they might be camping level 1 and building up board. Like drills that you want to maybe level them off, or if they're like a certain deck that wants to camp level 1. Like Kami, and to an extent Supreme Kai. Really, really awesome card. Definitely can give you just these ridiculous turns where you seal the game. We have Black Face Crush. This card is another card that Deborah got that is just ridiculous. Uh, I think, I think it's definitely not as valuable now that Black Pawn had gotten a nerf recently, where it made only all your attack styled instead of your card styled. But it's still, still a very good card. An AT4 physical and lower anger two. We have multiple cards in this deck that lower anger two. You know, as far as the physical beats decks go, you need to be able to keep your opponent's anger down so they don't level and get their stages back. And this card does it amazingly. Same with Can Cost a Strike, Devastating Glow. Black Chin Kick. Again, if you don't think you're going to play against ally decks, honestly, you don't need this card. The It's it's honestly a card I don't ever want to see against a non-ally deck. But hit, you double your anger, so that's kind of cool. And we are trying to anger in this deck up. And just being able to blank out allies, when you get that card with like a dig combat, or you get it with any of your combo cards over here, or like your level 2 or 3, it just gets ridiculous. Black Punt, you know, honestly, especially now the card got nerfed, um, it used to make all your cards styled, which your level 2 and dashing sword attack and demonic sword slash all are cards that can grab you more attacks if they're styled or named. You don't get that kind of synergy anymore, which kind of is a bummer. But as for intent, if you wanted to play, let's say, Perceptive Debora, or really any deck, you know, that wants cards to be styled, it's still nice. I think this, I'm pretty sure the way this does rule, 
it uh, does get you around Red Tana Blast. I'm 99% positive, so that's kind of nice still. But it's an attached card, and we do run Unleashed in this deck, so we need something to attach, and this is the best option that we really have for Deborah. Demonic Slash. Now, of course, Deborah's name cards have to go in pretty much any Deborah deck I can imagine. This card's awesome. It lowers anger, gives you anger, grabs you another attack. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I remember back when these were getting previewed and they were still sword considered Deborah's Demonic Sword Slash. Or sorry, Deborah's Sword Slash. That was pretty crazy when you could go grab one with another one. Of course, his MP levels were a little bit weaker, but it was still just stupid. Uh, Deborah Spit. This card I love hate. I hate that when you really, really need to kill board, it sucks because people are always going to have enough blocks to stop this damn thing. But it's also great that you also force an opponent early game if they maybe only have a single board card that they have to block this if they really want to keep that board card. I do like that it's a tug of war effect when it gets knocked off your deck. That's really cool. But otherwise, I honestly really fucking hate this card. <laughs> uh, I just uh, it's it's great when it's played against me. It feels like by Deborah's, but whenever I have it, it just I need to kill board really bad. But it's still better than nothing. And black honestly lacks good board hate. So, gotta take what you can get here. It's also considered sword, so it's very easy to tutor. Uh, Black's, sorry, Dashing Sword Attack, another combo card. It's pretty much the equivalent of Demonic Sword Slash, except for your discard pile. Definitely a card that you need. The whole idea of a sword deck is to just combo and try to keep bringing sword cards to your hand. And this is like one of them. This this card and Demonic Slash are the two main, main, main uh, combo pieces of that. Along with Debor level 1 and 2, grabbing you more sword cards. Uh, next, we have De Devilish Sword Strike, another card that came out with Debora. Here's another card, Lowers Anger 2. Like, Dashing Sword lowers anger, Demonic Slash lowers anger, these cards lower anger. It's all about hating people's anger. You know, you do not want people to level. You want to hold someone down in the early game really hard and beat the hell out of them. And that's what Debora does very, very well. Uh, right now, Devilish Sword Strike, oh, just awesome, awesome, awesome card. I actually like to run this card in clench decks too, because it's anger lowering, and clench uh, MPs get the benefit of this being a flat stage attack. Very, very good card. One of my one of my favorite cards in the game, probably actually too. Just like Devlo. Black Sword Attack, as far as Black Sword Hate go, or sorry, Black Sword cards go, both are phenomenal, but this card is amazing. It gives you board hate. Um, you know, when Spit just doesn't cut it, awesome, awesome, awesome. You put it in their hands. Instead of destroying it against combative, they can't put a drill back in play from their pile once you kill it with spit. So it's really nice in that matchup. Um, it just in general, being able to put it in their hands, so maybe at the end if they drew dead, they have to choose if they want to keep that or something else. Really nice card. Definitely one. And also, it's eight. It's like one of the few AT physicals in the deck. Now, when you get this in a combat and you've stage locked someone, and you're on level two, let's say you level to two with this card, it's coming in for 84 uh, stages in the life card because Deborah's MP levels modify, which I'll, I'll show his levels in a second once I get to the sword cards here. Um, but this card can come in really, really hot. Like, big, big damage. You can, you can drop this thing for 13 damage if you were able to, like, get a tree, t tree might attach, you know. It's pretty ridiculous. This is a great, great card. Does a lot of damage, good utility, gives you anger. Awesome. Uh, for final sword card in the deck, Black Sword Rush. So this card is just kind of, you know, pretty plain. It's good if they've drawn a card, if you've made them draw, if you've activated your mastery in a combat, and you got them to draw a card off your mastery. Um, but otherwise, you know, just kind of a plain one. It's nice that it has endurance. It's just a sword card. It's generally one that you're going to not really necessarily grab over the Black Sword attack ever, but it's there because sword. Now to go to the MP level here, we are pairing with the Mischievous Mastery. This is one of the probably the this is probably the best combination in my opinion with him. I think many people will agree. Um, just the fact is is that Mischievous can kill random cards out of your opponent's hand. It gives you some slime anger, which helps to board because he does want to level up, and the random discard can knock out really pesky blocks out of your opponent's hand, which is awesome. To board though, when entering combat, he gets to search his top five for a sword card which means you're always going to be entering, pretty much if you build your deck accordingly, you're always going to have cards to search. And all these cards here, 
I can grab with his level 1 when entering. There's even more cards that could be running. Now, I could be running... He also grabs name cards with his level 1. So not just sword cards, but name cards. So anything that's considered named, like Black Backstrike, which is a card that I honestly just recently cut to put Stomach Crusher in. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to stay, but Black Black Backstrike is an incredible card, and it's probably going to come back into this deck. But for right now, Stomach Crusher is in its spot. That's another card you can grab. It's considered named. It's a it's a it's kind of like a dig, you know. It's a physical kind of attack that can't be prevented. Awesome, awesome. Overwhelming power is a card that I've dabbled with in Deborah. You can tutor that to your hand when entering, and when you do that, you get to use a critical damage effect from overwhelming power's effect. Gives you you know just out of you know, out of combat crit is just awesome, awesome utility. Um, also, there is one more other sword card that I'm not running. There's one over here that I'll get to, but there's another one um, considered the sword. It's called Black... F uh, oh my god, I can't even remember what it's called. Black... Well, okay, it's... it's. I can't remember the name of it right now, but uh, there's one more sword card I could be running. It's a physical four, five stages. It's considered sword if you're a Majin, and next time your opponent draws a card, you get to draw a card. It's kind of a cool card for me personally. I always end up being stage locked, it feels like, and or I never want to play it at a point early on where I want to try to set it up with my mastery. Like I never want to lead with it, it feels like. That's my playtesting, so I've just omitted it from many of my builds. But you know, maybe you like it. I can't blame you. Maybe you do get use out of it for me personally. It's one that kind of floats in my mind, but I have yet to throw it back in since long, long many months ago. Um, to get back to the board, though, his level 2 is just like Dashing Sword Attack. Does the same effect on hit. And all your sword cards do extra damage. He also boasts some really, really beefy AT on both his level 1 and 2. Not that you use AT much, but for the few cards like Black Sword Attack, like I said, Black Sword Attack's going to come in for AT 4 stages, because it's 3 base plus 1, plus a life card. It's just big, big, big damage. And you can, if you have one in your hand, you level with it, you just go grab it back again if the level 2 hits, and you you can see how he can kick up quite a bit of damage. But this is the main level that you want to stay on a lot of the game. You only really want to get off 1 in a com mid-combat and go to 2. 3, three is a good level 2. 3 is really good to get to like mid-game when your opponent has some of a discard pile. Or against certain matchups that are really playing with their discard pile lot, because what 3 does is he's pretty much a dev blow. So not only do we have... Dev Blow, which banishes cards from pile. You got Cost of Strike, banishes cards from pile. You got level 3 and Mastery, which does banish a card, but level 3 also banishing cards. And this level 3 can help you put back more sword cards and whatever else you want back in your deck with its power. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It is nice to get to this level. You generally want to start a level or a combat on 2 before you go to 3. Would is ideal, in my opinion. I mean, honestly, the best combat you could ever ask for is starting with, like, 4 Anger on level 1, leveling up to 2, and then using 2, and then, like, unleashing or angering, probably just, un if you could, ideally, like, unleash to 3, so that way you can throw all of your sword cards for Unpreventable on 3, which is just a great way to close out a game if you haven't done it already. You Generally, if you're hitting this level in a combat, you probably already won the game, or you're pretty damn near close. Now the 4, really great level... But I generally find, like, I want to... I generally end the game on the level 2 or the level 3, the combat that I actually hit the level 3. If you get slowed down in 3, it feels like sometimes you just don't go anywhere. But the level 4, pretty respectable. It grabs you a sword card, and it gives you a modifier, and it makes your opponent lose stages, which is just awesome, which a lot of these sword cards will make your opponent straight lose stages, which, when they're taking them... If they don't have any stages, just making them straight discard cards off their deck is awesome, too. It's pretty much like having a dig going, you know. Still a great level, but, you know, ideally, it's like the 1 and the 2 are one, the ones that are really building you a lot more actions, so... But these are respectable levels if you want to get, you know, unleash up to them in a combat to just get some more fuel. So anyway, speaking of unleash, we have unleashed. Gotta run this card. I think it's just mandatory with the Debora. Like, you don't want to get stuck too long on one... And just being able to get the just the fact is is that he has actions on all of his levels that will get you more and more actions is just awesome. So I think unleashed is like mandatory. Not as much maybe as it used to be now that Black Punts 
is a lot weaker, but still a really, really good addition. Stare down. And the biggest like threat to Deborah is people just drawing blocks against him or leveling. Well, we have all the Santa Anger, so it's really just them leveling. Or sorry, them blocking. Um, and which is another reason, again, the leveling part is another reason why Unleash is great, because you can knock your opponent down if they have used an Unleash kind of effect. But Stairdown's just awesome, making sure that you kill a Time as a Warrior's tool, which is another reason why we have Sphere. Sphere is honestly just in here to kill event blocks like Time or Orange Juke or Red Stop. Tree of Mind at 1. This card is something that I dabble with going to 2, but I think it's good at 1. You really want this card, honestly, most of the time over Punt, but it's a dead card. You don't really want to draw it in combat. And you don't. You really, honestly, hate to draw it at all. You would rather just draw it at Leash and then get it that way. So, But awesome, awesome. Doing extra damage on all of your um, attacks. Stage damage is awesome. And then if you have it attached when entering, you can help you go grab... Aggressive Sword Drill, because it's a freestyle drill when entering, and then, you know, Aggressive Sword Drill, getting to tutor another sword card to your hand, awesome, all your named head hacks are unpreventable, which is awesome too, you know, if you're able to get your opponent to zero and you smack them with a Demonic Slash, or a Spit, I suppose, that, that works too, but either way, great, great card, just helping you just build so many actions, especially when you can get this card early, when you're on one still, and you enter combat with this, to go grab a sword card, because this has to be used first, because Deborah's effect is a search effect, and this says you have to use this first if you want to actually get the, the search to go. But you do this, and Deborah, and you enter combat with six card hand, you know, if you had held one from the previous turn and drew three, it's, it's ridiculous. And on top of it, you go to level two, you have another attack that can go grab you another card, and then you have cards like the Mind Slash Dash, you search, grab you another card, and it just, it just goes really awesome. You got Black Searching Technique, just another way to help kill out blocks, or really maybe pesky board that might stop your game, or even things like Defensive Burst. Um, I have dabbled with Black Scout Maneuver too, but I end up just always never wishing I had Scout Maneuver a lot of time. It's only, Scout Maneuver is really only good if I see it in the first like two turns of the game, so I can go snipe out like really pesky physical blocks, like Orange Swerve, or knock out things like Black Delay, or Black Defensive Burst, but even then it's... A lot of time I'd rather just have an attack, so... Uh, we got Time is Worst tool, you know, staple, stop everything card. This is where my block line is the really interesting part. It's always ever-evolving. Knee Catch is like the one card that always stays in there because it's big anger. But on the move, it's kind of taken my other slot. I used to run six physical blocks, three energy, time. Then it's just like I wanted to not run. And I had swipe in here, black swipe in here, because that's an awesome card, pile kill, but... I'm I'm uh, trying to just go a little more suicide at this point in my builds, and I have three on the move. It helps me go through my deck quicker, it draws me a card, and uh, it can stage lock people. It makes them lose stages, or gives me stages, so what's nice is if I do play against a physical deck, um, some of my attacks, like Dashing Sword Attack, do cost me stages. I think that is actually the only one. Oh, and Black Punt. So I can give myself some stages with this, so I can actually play those cards, which is cool. But uh, it's just purely to filter through my deck. Deborah, we're just kind of go for the speed kill. So, but anyway, that is uh, that is the deck. Pretty pretty simple, really. You're just trying to attack volume. I think for the most part, the only cards that are going to really float for me personally are going to be Stomach Crusher, and I'd say maybe Searching Technique. Honestly, this card is really awesome. I always love to see it. It's always nice to see it. Um, but Stomach Crusher for sure, and I would maybe say, uh, Chin Kick could always maybe use an adjustment in number, depending on how likely I feel ally decks I'm going to run into. But this is a really strong deck, I've lent this to other people, it's, it's just so stupid. It is a stupid deck that is very, very strong in the first couple turns, and if you don't see a physical block against it, it'll punish you very hard, but it definitely runs out of steam. It can definitely run out of steam really quick. Um, if you stabilize with any sort of board presence, especially allies, against him, it's it's pretty rough. Um, he can also draw pretty... If he draws slow early, it really, really hurts him. Like, if you do draw into the wrong board, or maybe you draw, like, spheres and, like, a block in the hand, you know, it's it slows you down a lot. And drawing, like, Black Punt 
and chin kick can be really and stomach crusher can all be like really really slow down your game plan um, in the matchups where you don't want those cards. I think he's still very strong MP. I think he is ridiculous. I think you can probably build him for a bit longer of a game. I know uh, my buddy David Meckler when he was still playing, he built Perceptive Deborah with Surprise Attack, which Surprise Attack, if you don't know, you search uh, your opponent's life deck and banish two freestyle cards out of the deck, and they search your life deck and do the same. And you might think, and why do why do you do that when Deborah's got all these freestyle cards? Well. Debor has so many freestyle cards that he doesn't really care what you get rid of because he's got so many good freestyle cards. Whereas, like, you hit your opponent and you're smacking out, you know, cards like Time is a Warrior's Tool, Confrontation, Unleash, so that they don't get to play them. You know, cards that'll slow you down a lot. Now, granted, it was better because back then the philosophy was he ran Black Punts too, which back then made all of your cards styled, which now it only makes your attack styled, but... I wouldn't necessarily think. I, I could have maybe seen how that could have been good back then, but I think this is the only way to play Deborah if you're going to play black. It's got to be mischievous. Still a very, very strong deck. Trying to reduce some of this glare here, but I've put a lot of games on this deck. Um, my deck list always fluctuates with this. It always just kind of depends on how I feel. At this point, I've mostly used this deck for self testing for probably the last like half a year at least now. More than. Like, uh, played it like a year ago. Over at uh, the uh, Dennis Bowl, the first Dennis Bowl, and I went like 3 2. Eh, you know, kind of misplayed a little bit in one game, which maybe could have won it for me, but otherwise, I think it's very, very, very strong deck. As far as consistent, eh, it, eh, it can, can be pretty consistent, but uh, it's definitely a very, very, very strong deck. And I think this could definitely use tweaks, depending on who you are and what you're playing against. But I think this is a pretty good base list. Definitely going to be ever-evolving, just depending on how I feel about it any given day. I throw three, four, five, six different cards in it and try them out. So definitely back, black, uh, back strike is a card that should definitely probably be in here. Um, overwhelming power is pretty fun. As far as that goes, I guess... And I do like, actually, Namekian Ball 4 is pretty fun to play in this, too. But... Um, yeah, I hope this kind of gives an idea. I'm sure a lot of people already have this deck made or know the list, but here's just kind of my breakdown of mine and why I run it. So, thanks for listening.